Well, first of all, gentlemen, tell us about Jester. Well, Jester's a J105. Um, we purchased, well, Kelvin purchased the boat in, in March, earlier in the year, having decided that this was a challenge that we were going to get stuck into. And um, it, it's been hard work, but thanks to Kelvin and Sarah, the effort and the time, we've, we made it to the start line and things continued on from there. Was this a winter kind of thing around a bar saying, let's do it two-handed? No, this was, this was, I don't know where I was, but it was, I was abroad, Stuart was somewhere else, and I got this text without a name on it, just said, single-handed, sorry, double-handed fast net. And I took one look at it and said, one word went back, yes. And that's how this whole stupid project <laughs> started. There was no thought, no pre-thought, no wanting to, actually. It was just, yeah, let's do that because it's, it's different and different. And I've been sailing 100 footers with 25 blokes around me and I suddenly thought this would be a nice thing to do without 25 blokes around me. Not that they're bad blokes or anything like that, but it just, it would be different. It would, we've got significant, significant birthdays next year and, and we've been looking for a challenge. And, and I, I sort of thought, well, OK, this would be quite interesting. And yeah. um, last, last year's victory in the double, with the double-handed crew with the French team was that's quite interesting and and having done the fast net several times between us um it, it seemed like the right thing at the right time yeah. you know you've done really well haven't you you happy oh well. <laughs> yes yeah. very happy very yeah. very happy actually it it rates there for me as probably it's in the top three or four things i've ever achieved in sailing and that's been quite substantial over the years so it's it's yeah and doing it there's something special about two up. I don't. I had never dreamt of any of this, and it is quite special, you know. When you're just one of 20 on 100, that's fine. But when you do it, two of you, it's it is different and it is very special. What, what makes it special? And what's it? What's its main challenge then? It's just just you have to do everything, you know. From one minute you're making a cup of tea, next minute you're making a major tactical decision, next minute you might be fixing the engine because we had a you know a fan belt suddenly starts to scream and you go Christ almighty you know, it's it's across the board and it's, it's things like resting you know mm -hmm. if, if one person gets tired and you don't keep the other keep that rest pattern going in terms of if one person does get tired then all of a sudden the other person gets drawn down to that level and, and you deteriorate very quickly so you're very conscious that you know, uh, we, we share the workload, we share the decision making, you, you chat through everything and, and make sure, you know, discussions around how you're feeling, do you need rest, yeah, okay, and, and you know, also having confidence in what each other are doing because you can't go downstairs and get your head down for an hour if, if you can't rest because you're worrying what's going on, on up at the top on the deck and, and it's, it's just having absolute trust in each other and knowing that you're both equally as committed to the cause of moving that boat faster down the track. It would be very easy to slip off the pace when the other guys sleep. Just go, you know, because it got quite difficult for a while in the second half of the RSC crossing. It was raining, it was bumpy, it was windy. We probably had the wrong sail on. You can't just change that sail. You can't send, as we normally do, six blokes forward to, to sort it out. And it would be very easy to slip off the pace and go, oh, I'll just have an hour, you know. And, uh, on the wheel, relaxed if you like, and and it's knowing that your your other party isn't going to do that to you because yeah. you know for the last 24 hours we we knew we were right up against it, um, and we would clawed back distance all the way across the the Irish sea, Celtic Sea uh, to a point that we knew for the last 24 hours it was just a full on charge cha we, chase got, after them. We'd got reasonably rested because we knew the last 12 hours from the cities was going to be a, a long downwind leg. It's 140 miles, 110 miles, something like that, I can't remember that. And we rested quite well, knowing that as we turned the corner, Stuart had gone on the wheel and I'd go on the trim, and that's yeah. how it was for the last 12 hours. This, this rest is quite relative, really, <laughs> yes, isn't it? Yeah, it is quite relative. <laughs> An extra half an hour's kip. Yeah. <laughs> well, well done, guys. And uh, I think uh, I'm right in saying you're the top British boat overall. Top British boat. Uh, fourth overall in the race and um, first double hander so that's very special job done thank you steve thank you